Welcome back, Shaliners. Today, I want to talk about something that that kind of goes to the heart of guys versus girls and dating and why you might feel that no matter what you do and no matter how much you accomplish and no matter how bright, fun, and bubbly you are, you cannot get a guy. I'm going to talk about why guys seem to really like plain Janes, basics, Meredith. And I've talked before, I've done videos about this before. And the term I kind of give to plain Jane girls is Meredith. And I have a friend named Meredith. Okay, let me just say, but I've met a lot of really like annoying Meredith. And I'm sorry, that's just, we're going to call them for the duration of this video. If you can't handle it, you can X out. I won't be mad. But Before we get started, just want to remind you guys that if you have a one-on-one question for me, you want to chit chat privately, get some, you know, extra help, find me on the Instinct Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected and follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at ShallonXO and click like and subscribe for new videos every Friday and a whole bunch in between. So plain Janes, let me tell you a story here. Let me tell you a story because, (laughs) spoiler alert, I'm not of the low maintenance variety. You know, I don't think people look at me and think, there's a girl who likes to camp. I like hair. I like lashes. I like lip gloss. I like rings. I like a million sparkly things in my apartment like a crow. The shinier, the better. And for a long time, it was really hard for me to meet guys. And I couldn't understand it because I'm like, all right, on paper, I should have everything that they're looking for. I'm a girly girl. When I go out, I like to dress like a Kardashian. Well, a Kardashian guest starring as a villain on Gossip Girl. Like that that specifically is like my niche and my vibe. That's that's me. And I'm like, okay, I'm wearing things that are tight and things that are short and I've got cleavage and blah, blah, blah. It's like, why, why are the guys at the bar talking to that girl in those goddamn Ann Taylor separates? She's in flats and I just couldn't understand it. It would make me crazy. And I even noticed this in Hollywood, which is, what you might have noticed in the uh, in the thumbnail there. Well, this isn't so much Hollywood; it's just celebrity in general. And higher than Hollywood, the royal family. Kate Middleton. I love Kate Middleton. Like I, this is not a Kate Middleton diss track. I love her. She seems like she's very like low key, but then she's probably like really sarcastic and got this like great dry sense of humor. But I wouldn't say that she's hot. She's beautiful, but not hot. Do you guys remember that episode of The Office when they were trying to decide if Hillary Swank was hot? And someone's like, she's beautiful, hot, same thing. And Kevin's like, no, a painting can be can be beautiful, but I don't want to bone a painting. Therein lies the Kate Middleton, you know? She's beautiful and she seems like a great mom, a wonderful wife, like I just love her. But hotness and fuckability, mm, I don't know any guys who are like, yeah. Meghan Markle, on the other hand, is hot like that. And I've done videos on Meghan and Harry's relationship. I think it's actually fairly toxic. The fact that since he met her, he's cut off his friends and his family is not a good sign. If someone needs to cut off toxic friends and family on their own, they should be doing it on their own. It shouldn't be a partner pushing everyone away. You know, there's a big difference there. It's not great, but that's what we're here to talk about. She is hot. Like Meghan Markle is like fuckable. She's got that vibe. She seems seductive. She's very fashionable. But like, she has been on the market for a while, you know, and Kate Middleton has been like kind of the queen bee in the palace. And so I think it's a really interesting, like, sort of case study in the two different types of women. Because here's a story I was going to tell you. One of my good friends is literally the cutest girl I know. She's gorgeous, gorgeous. She's got this tiny, perfect little body, long, beautiful hair, adorable face. She's a fashion director here in New York City for a major company. I won't blow up her spot. And she has the hardest time meeting guys. And she's like, I don't understand. And like, none of us understand either. But then I kind of like put it through like my mind Googler. And like, it's that guys are intimidated by her. And it's not her demeanor. She's very, she's almost shy. Like she's very low key. But if you look at her, she is so fashionable and not in like a douchey trends, trend chasing way, you know, where like the outfits wearing her. I could put on the exact same thing she's wearing and I would look like I had a psychotic break, but she can wear just like all these layers of jewelry and like drapey little cardigan things and really cool shoes. And like, I mean, her outfits are unbelievable and her Instagram is unbelievable. And she's at Coachella. She's in Aruba for another like influencer fashion shoot. And 
she's not like even ostentatious about what she's posting. She's just like, well, this is where I was and this is what I was doing. She's not a name dropper. She's not like that. And it's like, it's this phenomenon where all of your accomplishments and all your trophies end up building a wall around you, you know, because this is the thing guys want predictability. Guys, when they're choosing like a life partner, not just some girl they're going to fuck for a weekend, not just like a college fling or whatever, they want to know that they're going to come home to the same person every day. Kate Middleton is predictable. Kate Middleton is not the girl you're going to walk through the door and she's throwing dishes and she's having a meltdown and the kids are screaming. And she's like, you are 15 minutes late. She's not that girl. Megan. She probably isn't, but like, she's got that crazy hot quotient. You know, it's like, you don't know, you don't know. And that's very exciting, but not for the long term. And I've gone into my videos about why Harry chose her. I will link you guys and you can watch it because it's a whole, it it's, has nothing to do with the crazy hot thing. It's a cheap honed in on his, his shadow self and the him he has always felt was ignored by his family, right? But in this instance, let's ignore that. Kate is predictable, you know, and that's, the marrying kind. So what do you do if you're like my friend who is actually like the most stable, she doesn't really drink a lot. Like she's kind of a homebody. She loves her family. Like she goes and visits her sister and her family all the time. It's like, what do you do if you just maybe are a low key person, but you like it a little sparkly and shiny? What the hell are we all supposed to do? Wear low buns out to the bar? No. Death before Crocs. Oh, I love Crocs, but I don't wear them out. Okay? They're an inside thing. This is what I've learned because this is, I mean, I spent most of my romantic life dealing with this exact same thing. So one of two things are going on. If you think guys are kind of intimidated by you, you might be leading with your resume. We all have a category that we really don't want to be put in. Some of you, you don't want to be seen as like the slut. Or like the girl that hooks up too easy, you know? And who can blame you? It's not a good category to be in if people think that that's how you are. Because God forbid women can like sex. God forbid. For me, I never wanted to be put in the category of the girl who's just looking to get married and have babies. Because that's so contrary to who I am. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just really not my thing. And I don't want, I don't ever want a guy to be like, oh, she's just desperate to have a ring and a baby. <laughs> Excuse you. So I would sway way too far to the opposite end. And my first dates were like a LinkedIn profile come to life. I've done this and I've done that and I run this and blah, 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 blah. And guys are like, okay. Because here's how that contradicts predictability. What that does is it sets up an adversarial construct with a guy. Basically, it's a dick measuring contest. Guys are ruled by their egos. Men communicate to solve problems. They're providers and they're hunters. All of this circles back to one thing, accomplishments, you know? So if he's like, oh, geez, like all she's talking about is the thing she's doing and accomplishing, obviously the only way she's evaluating me is that same metric. And very few people want to be examined like that. Even if he runs a Fortune 500 company, even if he's running for Congress, we don't want to feel like our partner is constantly like, well, what's next? What are you doing? What are you providing? What are you accomplishing? It's not an emotional safe place to fall, you know? And then unconsciously you set up this competitive dynamic. And for the longest time, when I was younger, when I was dating guys, I, I was like, guys, my boyfriends are always so competitive with me. Why? Like, and a lot of it's because they were douches, but also I had unconsciously set up that construct in our relationship because I, it was like, who's got the biggest dick in the room? Is it you or is it me? You know? And that's, and then I was so surprised when they didn't understand that like, oh, I'm actually a very caring, low key, sweet maternal person. Why don't you see that about me? Did I let them see it? So this is what we have to do. We have to lead with that sweetness. It's not always easy. It feels vulnerable because our sweetness is inherently our underbelly, especially like for me and for my friend, like we live in New York city and you have to be kind of spiky to live here. Like this is not an easy town. People are busy. You don't have time for your bullshit. And if you, if you let your guard down too long, this city crushes you. It really does because everyone is, like I said, busy, 
tired. We are all so tired. We're all carrying so many different canvas bags with various changes of clothes and all sorts of things in there. And we just want to put it down and lie on our bed and not speak to anyone. So if you get in my way, or if you waste my time, or if you don't do your job and make my job harder, off with your head. And so we kind of stay all like puffed up like this all the time. <laughs> I remember one time <laughs> I've been in New York a few years and I went home to visit my mom in Irvine, California, like the, the softest, most marshmallow of a city. And she, we were at Target. She's like, she pulled me aside. She's like, you have to stop. I was like, what? She's like, you are ramming people with your cart because they're moving too slow. This isn't New York City. I was like, but they are moving slow. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't fly in New York City. And, but like, that's, you kind of stay like all puffed up, like all puffer fishy. So for me to realign and lead with the sweetness was very difficult, but I got really good results from it. And here's what I want you to know. Leading with your sweetness, which you have, of course, you, if you have a friend in the world, you have sweetness. If you have a parent or a sibling or any sort of relationship that you've ever fostered, you are a sweet person. We all are. We're women, we're nurturers. Being sweet is not the same as being weak. It is not the same as being a pushover. It is not the same as turning down your shine to make a man's ego feel better. Not at all, not at all. But this is the balance we have to find. And this is kind of like our life's work in a lot of ways. And when it comes to dating, it's like, how do I show that I'm an alpha, but I'm a feminine woman as well? Because guys are very black and white. She's a slut, she's a good girl, she's a kind you marry, she's a kind you have a fling with. It's hard for them to like see, you know? I was watching some documentary the other night about cam girls, like girls who do like webcam shows where they like do things, slutty things. And the girls were like, yeah, sometimes I'll show like all cam that I'm like cooking breakfast. And the guy's like, she cooks? What? These men are dumb. And they're like, oh, if she likes sex. She can't walk a dog. Those two things all go together. You know, like they, it's hard for them to bridge that gap. Also, perhaps the guys who are on cam sites all the time aren't, necessarily the most sophisticated or emotionally complex. So you lead with the sweetness, not by diminishing what you're accomplishing. Just don't make that the very first, don't make that the overall vibe you're giving out, you know, instead. And look, Hey, I'm not saying sit there and listen to his stupid story where he's like not asking you any questions. You can be sweet and get up and leave a date. You can be sweet and change the subject. You can be sweet and be like, I actually didn't find that racist joke funny. Why did, why did you tell that, Connor? What does that mean to you? Do, you? do you just really think Mexicans are lazy? But you don't, like, stand up for who you are and have your boundaries and set them. But tap into the side of you that your girlfriends see and your girlfriends love. Because your girlfriends understand that you can be the fashionable girl, the bad bitch, but also the one who's going to be there when you're going through a crisis, the sweet one, the one who's going to bake you panda cupcakes, you know? So tap into that and lead with that because that's what the plain Janes are doing. They are coming across as very, very predictable, sweet, and ego-wise, a safe space. Kate Middleton isn't trying to compete with Prince William. Meghan Markle very much is competing with Prince Harry in terms of celebrity. Megan is very much Machiavellian about rising her profile and climbing the social ranks. I mean, good for her. Who doesn't want to climb the social ranks? But that's going to have a downside to your, to your love life, you know, <laughs> outside of marrying Prince Harry. I mean, kind of only one of him. So now that he's off the market, you might want to not make that your overall strategy. So someone like Kate Middleton seems sweet. She seems accessible. And most importantly, she seems drama free. What do guys define as drama? She seems crazy. She seems drama. Well, it's the lack of predictability. And it's also someone who talks all the time, right? We have friends who are like that, who just like, and when we listen to someone, we unconsciously breathe at their same pattern. So that's why listening to someone like that is really stressful because we're like, <gasps> we're holding our breath too, as they're just like spewing out a 29 minute story about a Snapchat situation. We know. Plain Janes, they're more reserved. They're chill. They don't have to fill every single silence. They're okay with a little chill, with a little silence. They're okay with just like sipping their drink and that's fine. Me, I am historically not okay with that. I'm shucking and jiving and making the jokes. And I come across as probably a little crazy, 
which translates to probably a little dramatic. Gosh, if she has to talk this entire time we're at dinner and she can't really handle silences, she might be completely okay picking a fight if I'm silent for six hours while I'm at work and not texting her. You know what I mean? This is how the leaps of logic go. And this is what we can learn from plain Janes is like, you know, it's okay to not do the big dance to impress guys. Because isn't that exactly how nature should go, right? I've talked before that I saw a movie called Penguins, the Disney nature film about penguins. And it reminded me of a lesson we all have learned at some point or another, which is the male is the one that attracts the female. The penguin spends his whole life swimming around, going to this one mating location, picking out the perfect rocks, just as the Miz and perfect rocks, to build a nest to attract a female. Female he hasn't even met yet, but he wants to make the biggest, best nest to show that he is mateable. It's not the female who's like, Aah! like careening around Antarctica trying to attract a mate. She's a little laid back. She's discerning. She's okay with some penguin silence. When she finds one she wants, she's like, all right. She's not doing the mating dance. And I spent a lot of years doing the mating dance and it didn't really get me anywhere. And when I stopped, when I realigned, when I was okay with the silences on a date, when it's like, well, if he's not gonna ask me a question, I'm not gonna sit here and go into interrogation mode and ask him either. We can sit here in silence for 20 minutes until the guacamole comes. I don't care. I'm gonna drink my margarita now. When I started doing that, everything started to change. Because, and it, ironically, I felt like I had more power than ever and I was more of a badass than ever because I was setting boundaries and I was adhering to them, you know? It's like, no, I'm not actually going to get dressed up in my rent the runway, Spanx, sky high heel, hair clip situation for a first date with a Tinder dude. He's gonna get me in leggings and flats and you know a denim jacket and that's what he gets when he takes me out more he will earn more glam he will earn that extra level of access to me he will also earn access to my accomplishments i've told you guys this before our history is not something we owe to anyone our accomplishments are not like what we should lead with they are that is information that is earned not like it's not hidden, but it's like, you need to show me that you can handle my accomplishments. You need to show me through your behavior, through your consistency and your escalation of those patterns that you are worthy of knowing what a bad bitch I am. And until I lay it down exactly for you and be like, oh, this on my shelf, it's just copies of my latest book because there's a few, baby. Until you show me that you can handle that, I'm just going to allude to things. I'm just gonna give off the quiet vibe of, mm -hmm, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a bad bitch, but I bake. You know, I'm gonna give off that Kate Middleton quiet storm confidence. And I'm gonna see how that goes. Because at the very worst, he's still gonna leave me for a Meredith and Taylor Sippert. But I at least won't feel like I poured my guts out to someone. First of all, I won't have wasted the time, like, getting completely glammed up, you know, putting on all the makeup in case he wants to FaceTime right away. And telling him about every single thing I've done as though I'm handing him like a paper to grade. Because when we tell every single thing about ourselves, guys, and this is not, it's not just guys, it's human nature because you guys do it, girls do it too, which it's like, hmm, well, I don't like that that they've done and they should have done that sooner or this, I don't like that company. It's like, well, who the fuck asked you? Like, it, you know, you're not here with a red pen correcting someone's history. So my history belongs to me. My accomplishments belong to me. And I share them with people who I feel safe with. And that's something they have to earn. And that's something that the Plain Janes have taught me. Kick back, do less. You will come across as more stable, more predictable. And you are these things though. You are these things. But don't let like the shininess interfere. And you'll come across as drama free. So what advice would I give to my friend who is actually a very low key person? And you know, it's funny. That's something that guys always kind of say to me, like after we start dating a little bit, they always, always say, you're actually so much more low key than I thought you'd be. Because if you look at my Instagram, my YouTube, I have a Wikipedia page, like it's like, yikes, guys don't think they're gonna be able to keep up with it. It's like, oh no, don't worry. I'm a complete dork. 
it's animal shows all Saturday morning. So I have learned to like dial down the dress code. And that's what I would actually tell my friend to do. Like if you're going out like guy hunting, jeans and a t-shirt, pair of heels, some cute earrings, but like, that's it. You don't need to go overboard. Guys don't appreciate it anyway. You know, they're going to look at an outfit. Guys look at a really stylish girl and think, I'm never going to be able to compete with her. It always goes back to a competition. Look how stylish she is. She's going to look at me in my Vineyard Vines blue vest and think, that guy's a dork. I'm not going to be seen with a guy who's that basic, who's that preppy, who's that plain, whatever. So the guy's going to think, what girl isn't going to judge me? Ah, another girl in a Vineyard Vines vest. That's who I'm going to go with. And that's why these people stick together. That's why you have preps marrying preps, goths marrying goths. You know, there's the element of what? Predictability. So if you can show someone that you are predictable and stable through your personality and not let your clothes do the talking, it's really going to help. And you know what? Make your Instagram private. Don't even give it to him. Don't even give it to him. Or say like, hey, you know, like Instagram, like might be a bit much, but then you go on a date. And you dress down, you dial it down, and you show that you are a low-key, cool, chill person. You are the Kate Middleton. You just happen to come in Meghan Markle's body and face. Hey. It's not the best, right? Hot and chill. Oh, I'm still working on both of these things. I hope this is helpful. If you guys have more questions about this, definitely message me on the Instant Go app. We will talk one-on-one. -on -one. But I understand what it's like to feel like, you know, you love getting glammed up and you love doing that. And if you want to do that, that's fine. But just maybe make that a girl's night out. You know, when I get all dressed up with the hair and the everything, like I'm not even looking for a dude. I mean, maybe to like talk to at the bar, buy me drinks. But like when I'm dude hunting, I dress completely different. I act completely different. I lead with a whole different side of my personality. And I save the best flashiest bitchiest side for my girlfriends because they're the ones that are going to appreciate it. For more, click like and subscribe. And like I said, find me on the Instant Go app or on Instagram at ShallonXO. And I'll see you guys later. Stay hot.